Hello. So today we're going to discuss the process of how to get married in the province of Ontario in Canada. And this is good for any officiant to know. It's good for officiants to be able to tell couples exactly how to do this. There's a lot of information online and the idea of being able to explain this to your couples is to make it easy for them so they don't have to root around for information and to make sure they have everything done correctly so you can correctly and legally marry them. Okay, so obviously there are a few things that uh, you need to know before you get married, which includes uh, not being married to somebody else. You must be fully divorced. Um, you must be over the age of 18 or have a note from your parents if you are 16, 17. Okay, hopefully you don't get married at that age, but to each their own. So to begin, the first thing you need is you require the couples require a marriage license to become legally married and they can pick up the license from any city hall in Ontario. So even if they're getting married in Caledon, they can get the marriage license from Toronto. Now I always recommend that they go and pick up their license within two months before they get married. A license is good for three months, but if they pick it up two months prior, it's off their to-do list and they still have a month left over if by chance they forget their license at home on their wedding day, which happens, not a problem. You sign it later, you always, always have to sign it on the date that is actually signed. You can't backdate it or forward date it. It has to be signed on the date, okay? Now, how do they get this license? Well, they're gonna go to a city hall. They can fill out an application that they're gonna hand into a city hall clerk to get their actual license. Now, on my website, themarryinglady.com, under wedding planning, pre-wedding, there is a downloadable uh, PDF of the application, uh, but often when you walk into city halls, they have a little stand, you take the application out, fill it out, and then take it, take a number, line up, go to city hall, get the license. You can do it in one day. They'll do it right there, okay? Um, when you get your license, uh, make sure you pull it out and read it. I mean, the people filling it out are human beings. Make sure it's correct before you leave City Hall. When you go to City Hall, you're going to bring uh, two pieces of original pieces of ID, government issued ID. This will vary with the uh, various City Hall um, venues that you go to. Uh, often it's a valid passport, record of immigration landing, Canadian citizenship card, driver's license, um, and your certificate of divorce if you uh, have been married in the past. So it saves time to actually download the marriage license application ahead of time. You can then go, not as a couple, but just one of you, go down to any city hall with the two pieces of your partner's ID and get the marriage license and you bring that to your officiant. So basically what you bring to your officiant is this brown envelope. It's an important brown envelope. This is the actual envelope that uh, your license gets put into for your officiant to mail. You as a couple, or the couple, do not mail this. We mail it within 48 hours of having filled it out. Okay, so let's see what's in the brown envelope. And these things uh, vary across Ontario on what they actually give you. So in the brown envelope, there are a few key things, most of which you as the officiant do not require. So the first thing that they give you is a list of what's in the brown envelope. You can recycle that. Next, how to change your names. Now, as officiants, we do not know this process. I've tried to learn this process. It's very complicated. You can either change your last name by assuming your new name, if you wish, um, or you can actually change your birth certificate. You become a whole new person. The reason why they put this in the envelope is that for 90 days after your marriage, you get to do the process for free. You get to change your name for free. If you're born in Canada, you can change your name anytime you wish. If you're born outside of Canada uh, and you're getting married in Canada, you will require a certificate of marriage, which we'll get into later to then change your name, okay? Next, you will find 
the actual, this is the back of a marriage license that I have to mail off today. You'll find the actual license in it. This top part will all have been filled out. This is the part that the officiant needs to fill out. Make sure you tell the couple, don't touch this beforehand. Leave it be, we fill it out, okay? And it has a few things that are required on it, such as your license number, your address, um, who you're affiliated with, and the location of where the wedding took place. The witnesses sign this, we sign this, and we mail it off. We take a picture of it before we mail it off in case Canada Post loses it. And then we have a copy of it, okay? Also in that envelope is a longer sheet. Um, this has been kind of ripped off. Uh, a longer sheet which has something called the record of solemnization. This is a souvenir. It is a fake marriage certificate. It is a leave behind to basically say, yay, you're married, here you go, here's your certificate. But it's really just a fake until you can actually apply for the real one. Again, you sign it and the witnesses sign it. You fill in the names of um, the couple that's getting married. What I always tell couples is that this number at the very bottom is the same number as your actual marriage license. So this is something to give them um, a souvenir that has the actual number on the bottom. Um, and how you fill out the names on here is exactly how the names are on their marriage license, which is exactly how the government is going to uh, register them, which means that's exactly how the names will need to be inputted into the system when requesting the actual marriage certificate. Okay, now many city halls will provide this application for the marriage certificate, which they say wait, um, they say to wait 90 days after you've been married to basically get your marriage certificate, which is just, uh, there are two types of certificates. There's one, a long form, which is basically a photocopy of this, but them saying they received it and, uh, and you are married. The other form is a, a, a nicer looking actual certificate. And you'll need that certificate in order to change your name if you wanna get it for free or if you're from outside Canada. Now, what I do after I marry couples is I give them a link to go online to then fill out the request for their certificate. Okay, because it, I find that it's easier, it's faster, it saves them postage, and um, so they can recycle that. All right. Now, something that couples need to know is that it is um, it varies across uh, uh, different um, cities in terms of the cost of your marriage license. So some city halls offer better deals than others. In Toronto, a license costs. $140. Ajax, Oshawa, Whitby, Newmarket are all less expensive. So if you're traveling outside of Toronto and you're getting married in Toronto, pick up your marriage license there. It's cheaper. It varies. So I don't know the exact costs. Um, Burlington, Oakville, Milton, King City are actually more expensive than Toronto right now at this time. Uh, Tweed, which is an hour's drive east of Peterborough, is one of the cheapest in the province. So if you're out there, it's a good place to pick up your marriage um, license and then bring that to us. And that's what we fill out. Okay. The other thing, of course, that we fill out, um, the license record of solemnization. And we always keep a record for ourselves in our register. 